Back in 2019, I attended Hot Chips in person. And while I was there, I did actually manage to get into this limited invite Hot Wings event there where I had the honor of meeting and speaking with Jim Keller in person. And actually, if you want to see the whole conversation he had over Wings with Raj Kaduri, I did manage to get a recording of it while I was there. So you can watch the whole thing and I recommend it. My favorite part of the talk was hearing Jim Keller call quantum computers pixie dust. And here's the badge too that I wore there. I'm never throwing this away because it reminds me of this amazing conversation I had with Jim Keller while he was mingling with guests. During said conversation, I actually managed to work up the courage to speak to him directly and ask him what the heck he was planning to do with Intel's future CPU architectures. Specifically, I said, is there any chance you could do something like combine threads to make a single thread to boost IPC? And what he told me, amongst many, many sips of beer actually, is that it was the other way around is how he thought we should do it. Now, I gotta be honest, I never really got what he meant by that. I'm not a CPU architect. I never put much thought into what he meant by that until, well, this month, when I was finally told the full details of his Royal Core project by somebody very, very high up at Intel who saw my recent Royal Core videos and wanted to speak out to set the record straight. Now, overall, this individual didn't have that much to critique about the overall leaks I was putting out. This person confirmed that, number one, yes, Beast Lake is totally canceled. And number two, this decision was made early this year. And then number three, Yes, Jim Keller left Intel because of the political infighting at the company and him leaving Intel did overall eventually end up harming the project. However, one thing this individual did not agree with is that there were any issues with the project itself. Supposedly, according to this individual I keep mentioning, and by the way, this is a person I spoke with face to face with proof that they worked at Intel. This isn't some anonymous email, people. This is someone very, very high up at the company that wants to set the record straight. According to this person, the Royal Corps project was trucking along just fine and it was hitting milestone after milestone. There was zero doubt, at least up until this person was following the project, that it would continue just fine. And Pat abruptly pulled the plug on the project early this year. That's right. It was Pat, apparently, who decided to kill the Royal Corps project that a team in Oregon was working on because, well, and this is what the person told me Pat said, Intel doesn't need high performance cores anymore if all CPUs are going to do is connect GPUs. Now, before you say that's entirely insane, consider that this is basically how NVIDIA operates right now, and they're doing great. NVIDIA doesn't need their Grace CPU cores to be competitive with Zen 5 and IPC. They just need the throughput to tie their whole package together, and that is what Pat was thinking. Royal Core was costing a lot of money, and for laptops, I think Pat assumed they could just brute force their way to efficiency with the most expensive nodes and advanced packaging. And then in server, they didn't need their cores to be good anymore. They're just going to be roads that connect AI chips. However, here is where I think this is one of the dumbest decisions ever made in history. It's not that this argument doesn't hold water, it's that it's too late to make that argument for Intel. Pat has missed enough boats that I'm worried that in killing this Royal Core project, he has sunk the last ship before a big storm hits Intel. I mean, think about it. Pat bet on GPU a few years late, and then right when ARC came out, there was a GPU crash and nobody cared. And during that time, he should have been betting on AI early, but he didn't kept pouring money into ARC, and now, in some last-ditch effort to get the money to accelerate AI development, it sounds like he's basically gutted Intel's best CPU team that was built by Jim Keller, which is horrible because if you've already missed the AI training boat, then what you should try to do, at least in my opinion, is that you should have the most performant cores on the market so that when the apps are built after all of this training is done, at least then you have the most desirable CPUs when there is a wave of upgrades. But now it seems like Pat's killed that as well. I mean, heck, if you want public evidence of what I'm talking about, have you noticed recent headlines stating that there's a bunch of Intel CPU architects that have left Intel in Oregon? Who do you think those people were? 
where do you think the Royal Core CPU design team was? It was there. And they left because they want to make high performance cores. And they knew that they were going to be stuck making, like, I don't know, parts of an SOC or some IP block for Panther Lake and probably just a bunch of e-core products because Intel doesn't need high performance cores anymore. And they're sick of it. They wanted to move past e-cores, not become stuck in just making e-cores. And actually, that's right. You did just hear me correctly. There were plans by this team to combine E and P cores eventually and to only make high performance cores at Intel again. And what this would be is really ultra big cores that can, well, do more than just act like a single core. That's right. I have the full details on what Jim Keller was working on that Pat Gelsinger canceled. And it wasn't just this individual I keep bringing up that told me. I brought it to other Intel sources I have, and none of them could tell me everything, but all of them could piece together parts of the picture I was given, thus corroborating the whole story. And I want to tell you now, even if you'll never be able to buy it probably, what this six core 24 thread gaming monster would have looked like. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by FlexiSpot and their roster of high-quality standing desks and office chairs. Recently, my girlfriend upgraded to the new E7 standing desk, and boy, does she love it. It has an incredibly sturdy design with very reliable motors that can easily operate with the included controller, and of course, it just also looks and feels great. And it comes with an outstanding set of warranties with 30-day risk-free return services, but I don't think you're going to want to use them because... It really just feels so high quality. And you know, so does the C7 office chair. She also got that as a fantastic foam seat with an ergonomic design and excellent lumbar support. And yeah, as you can tell, we have multiple FlexiSpot products here. It is because they genuinely are very, very high quality. And so I'd recommend them wholeheartedly. And if you want to support this channel and maybe get one of these fantastic products as well, click on the link in the description and follow the directions below to get the best prices on their products during their August sales. If you do, you'll be supporting the channel and you'll also be getting yourself the best possible deal on those products. So check out FlexiSpot Desks today. All right, let's not waste any time. Let me now outline what the Royal Core roadmap that's now canceled looked like. So first of all, there is Arrow Lake coming out this year, and this was meant to be a bridge architecture to Royal Core. Arrow Lake was not Royal Core, but they knew that they were going to eventually remove hyperthreading, and so when they had some issues getting hyperthreading working in Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake, it was quickly axed because who cares? Let's simplify the cores, save a little bit on die space. We're not even going to use hyperthreading soon, and so let's just get into you know getting used to focusing on extra single threading performance wherever you can get it and stop worrying about maximizing hyperthreading's performance, right? So then in 2026, after Air Lake refresh launches in 2025, Nova Lake was supposed to be Royal Core 1.0 with an early version of what this channel exclusively leaked, rentable units that removed hyperthreading for massive gains in single threading performance. Now, to be clear though, I'm not really sure what's even going on with Nova Lake anymore because Beast Lake's canceled. The thing coming after Beast Lake was canceled. And I don't really know if rentable units will ever come out. I'm not saying they won't, but you know, I've heard about interesting things like uh, eight plus 16 and 16 plus 32 Nova Lake designs. Some of them may be getting hyperthreading back, maybe because they're done with rentable units. I'm not sure. It's, it sounds like it might still not have hyperthreading, but not have rentable units, which would be very disappointing. But really my point with what I'm saying right now is could Nova Lake end up like what I leaked in previous videos? Maybe, but I'm not really sure I'd bet my life on it anymore considering how much is changing there at Intel with their CPU roadmaps. All right, going back, so Nova Lake was Royal Core 1.1, I mean 1.0. Then you go to Beast Lake, that was Royal Core 1.1. And eventually, although I was told there was a consideration for a 4 plus 32 design, they settled in on a 12P plus 16E core design, which by the way, even without rentable units, I bet all the gamers here are like, please Intel, do 12P cores and then just as many E cores as you need. We don't need 32 E cores, probably not even 16, but give us 12P cores. Apparently that was the plan with Beast Lake and it would have reused the GPU tile 
an SOC layout from Nova Lake, like Arrow Lake reuses Meteor Lakes, and it wasn't guaranteed, but this point here, if not Nova Lake, they were hoping at least Beast Lake or a Beast Lake Plus would have been able to have two threads per rentable unit module. Now, this isn't hyper-threading. In Windows Task Manager, I was told by sources that this would appear like just two full cores, but the second, second core would only be used when it was needed. What this is, is a massive P core with the resources of two cores that when it's needed, it can split into two cores. It's kind of almost the opposite of hyper-threading, and apparently it was expected to have a massive performance boost. But not as massive as the final one. You see, I asked, well, what was the final iteration of this? You're talking about, you know, sometimes having two threads, but it's not hyper-threading per rentable unit module, and you're, it sounds like you wanted to move past E-cores. Well, how many cores did Beast Lake Nex have? And the person told me, oh, six plus zero, to which I went, I'm sorry, are you misspeaking? J just six big cores. And then my jaw started to drop when I realized what that probably meant. That's right. Beast Lake Next was the full Royal Core 2.0, the full realization of Jim Keller's vision. The flagship desktop CPU planned to utilize just six P cores, but each P core could split into four smaller cores in each module. When needed, this six core CPU could act like four plus eight or two plus 16, and the non split cores, however many you needed, they were expected to have over double the IPC of Raptor Lake. I asked about clock speeds. I was told probably 5.5 to 6 gigahertz, maybe a little higher. They weren't really aiming to have clock speed be a major component of what made Beast Lake Next a monster. It just had absurd IPC, less cores, but each core is profoundly stronger than now. And if we were to ever get bogged down, guess what? You could just split into four cores as needed. So yep, that's right, Pat Gelsinger canceled this incredible design. It was his decision, and from what I am told, it really did genuinely take the team by surprise. Uh, up until early this year, in fact, I was even told that it seemed like Pat Gelsinger hated e-cores, wanted to get rid of e-cores, just wanted to go back to per-core performance leadership, but I don't know, I guess because of mismanaging of funds, uh, by overhiring when probably Intel should have become leaner when Pat took over, and by wasting money on projects like Arc instead of reinvesting that into making sure your CPUs are launching on time or that you can compete in AI, Pat ran out of places to get money and decided to pull the plug on their best CPU design team. So... Yeah, this is an incredibly disappointing thing for me to hear because of the ramifications for if Intel will really be competitive long-term in CPU. Um, but, you know, let's dwell on the cool thing for a second here. Can you imagine how incredible Beast Lake Next would have been? For laptops, you could have had it boot down to like two big plus four little cores dynamically and turn off the other cores and then only depending on literally the apps open at the time boost into the combination of big and little cores that you need and because you can turn off parts of the core that means that yeah you can turn off parts if you don't need six big ones it's not like you had to enable all six big at a time this dynamic system had profound energy saving ramifications i am told and also profound ramifications for thermal density because each module will be like dynamically spreading the thermal load kind of over four cores so that the, it, when it needs to, it can hit maximum single threading performance and clock speeds at all times. And I mean, think about that on desktop for gaming. You could have had four or five ultra big cores running full tilt and then just split one of those six cores into four to handle the other tasks, like a five plus four or four plus eight mode. Come on. We all know that would be the ideal configuration for outrageous frame rates, which, or even for just server. Think of server. Think of a giant 64 core server CPU that delivers ultra responsiveness and high flow performance when a website isn't loaded up or when you don't have that many employees at your company uh, logging into the cloud. But then when you get a bunch of traffic, boom, now it's 256 cores. You're not going to run out of uh, throughput. Um, and high frequency traders, I mean, <laughs> they would have loved this. But anyways, now what's going to happen next? 
I really don't know. Like I said, I have heard that Nova Lake could be 16 plus 32 or 8 plus 16, but just traditional high power consumption, not a mega, mega IPC increase, just throwing more cores and threads and power consumption at the problem, especially if they enable hyper threading again. And I guess that's one last thing I want to mention. I don't know that people should be rooting for seeing hyper threading appear a bunch at Intel in the future. I mean, we know it's not going to be in Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake. But, like, if you start seeing it pop up in a bunch of other products, that doesn't tell me they fixed hyperthreading. That tells me they have no intention of ever going forward with Royal Core. And so they're giving up on moving past hyperthreading and just adding it back into all of their future products. Although, you know, I'm going to try to end on an optimistic note here. The good news is that I am told most of the groundwork is done. And they think in theory, this six core, 24 thread ultra core design should work fine. Royal core in theory should work and Intel has the patents and the blueprints down. So maybe rentable units could resurface. But for it to, it's gonna take reinvestment, rebuilding of this CPU design team in Oregon or making sure that the people in their other design teams in Israel can really take this and hit the ground running with it. And they're probably gonna have to try to find a way to rehire a bunch of talented engineers or find other ones that can do this work. And it's just gonna take a lot more time and money than it probably would have were this to not have been canceled. So I want to be clear that I, this could happen eventually, and we shouldn't give up on the dream of rentable units just yet. I just don't know if that's ever going to happen as long as this guy's still in charge.